Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creators Podcast. I'm your host, K.A. Every Day. This is the Indie Artist Safe Place, so take off your shoes, get comfortable, and stay a while. Do us a favor and please rate the show. And if you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. Now that everybody has taken off the shoes and got comfortable, P, you already know the deal. What you been up to? Chilling, man. Just trying to get ready for 2024. That's it. Hey, man, getting ready for 2024, man. I had to give you some air horns for that, man. I like how you're talking, man. We we got to make sure we're moving at the speed of business. Um, Oof. So I want to take some time. I really want to unpack this thing. This is a sad day for me because anybody that's been following a podcast knows how I feel about Jay-Z. Um, always put Jay-Z in my top five. I would even go as far as saying that me personally, I feel that Jay-Z is the GOAT when it comes to rappers, right? But with that being said, again, this one hurts me. So uh, he just recently put out a movie. He's the executive producer or he's the producer of the movie, uh, The Book of Clarence. So with the movie, there's a soundtrack. And um, on the soundtrack, he decided to do a 10-minute song with D'Angelo. And the song is titled, I Want You Forever. Again, this is on the Book of Clarence soundtrack. Um I got a lot of issues with the song, but I don't want y'all to take my opinion. I want y'all to suffer through 10 minutes like I had to suffer through 10 minutes. This is 10 minutes of my life that I won't be able to get back. Like Jada Kiss always say, you know what I'm saying? Time is money. We can't get an hour back. So I had to suffer through this song 10 minutes. So I'm going to play this song. Let me find it real quick. I'm going to play it for y'all, and I want y'all to listen and hear what I heard. And then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to ask P's opinion, and then I'm going to give y'all my opinion. Hold on. All right, man, I did y'all a favor. I didn't want y'all to have to suffer no longer. That was probably about five minutes of y'all life y'all can't get back. I listened to the whole 10 minutes. Um, do you need some time to make any adjustments, Peter? Do you want to uh, give your assessment of what you just heard? Give me one second. All right, so while he making his adjustments, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. Because um, I really want y'all to, to, to really hear what I'm saying. That was only half of the song. There's still another five minutes of this song that I didn't play. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just ruin the end of the movie for y'all. D'Angelo just keeps repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so what you heard for the first three minutes or so before Jay-Z finally decided to come in, that's basically what you hear on the back end. And then at some point, it just kind of turns into like an instrumental or you just kind of hear a little bit more of the the beat and the sounds of the track and D'Angelo at some point stops repeating itself. I, I just gave you the cliff notes. So you can thank me later. I know it's going to come off like I'm hating, uh, but like I told y'all at the beginning of this podcast and for those that's been following me, I'm probably one of the biggest Jay-Z fans. I consider him the GOAT. But I got to be objective. Like, you know, I can't be no fanboy. Like, if it's whack, it's whack. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what comments say, if I don't like it, I don't like it, that don't mean that I'm hating. Um, yeah. Can you still so, hear me? I'm, I'm sorry. So my, so my man, he back. So uh, your thoughts. Let me know what you think. So from my perspective, the, the first thing that struck me odd when I very first heard it, I think I called you and told you that it reminds me, and I, I, not saying that this was their intention, but it reminds me a lot of the uh, outcast Spody Wody. Um, maybe I'm pronounced, I should have did my research, but the, uh, but it bum bum, um, and specifically going into Big Boy's verse, um, it gave me that kind of feel and cadence. Um, not saying that they were trying to duplicate that. Uh, maybe if they could have found like a different way, but the the poetry to it was eerie similar or gave me that kind of vibe. Um, hey, it's 2024, man. Uh I guess we in the era of people don't deserve bars anymore. So, um, you know, 
we get poetry instead of bars or we get flutes instead of bars. Um, so that's, uh, that's where we're at. I, me personally, um, I put Jay in that category of there's been some, uh, some verses of his that have like shaped uh, my persona when it comes to my art. So, you know, definitely study him. Uh, but at the same time, you know, not everybody's going to feel the same way. Um, I'm not saying that I like it. I'm open to it. But all in all, just wasn't something that I think that would be playing in the car while I'm riding. All right. So you had a very interesting take, and I'm glad that it reminded you or you kind of compared it to Outkast, Spody Odie, uh, Dope Alicious. So uh, and I'm glad that you made it a point to hum that melody or you did the melody. Dun -dun -dun -dun, dun -dun 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 -dun. So I'm going to give you guys a quick history lesson, hip hop lesson today. That song came out in 1998. The reason why that's very important is 2024. That melody was so iconic. Me and Prince, in a second, we was able to remember that melody. That melody is ingrained in our head. That's how hot that melody was. Me and Prince, and I just played y'all the song. We just listened to the song, and I bet you, you can't spit back what the melody was from what I just played. So that's why I feel that these two songs should never be mentioned in the same sentence, not unless you're just trying to say that these are two songs that are very long. Outside of that, these two songs should never be mentioned in the same breath. So I'm going to go on a little bit farther in case you don't quite understand exactly what I'm trying to break down to y'all. Now, I don't know if you heard, but D'Angelo kept repeating the same line over and over and over again, right? I guess you didn't hear him the first 50 times he sung it, so he wanted to keep repeating himself. I don't know if that's hot or not, but I'm, hey, that's what he was doing. So so if I could chime in on that part, okay. right? So uh, if you, like, so you can, from a composer standpoint, D'Angelo is brilliant as far as composition and arrangement. But I could clearly see that the idea was probably coming from Jay-Z and format came from Jay-Z because I, I, I I really don't believe that if D'Angelo had full, full creative full autonomy, control, I think autonomy is the word you're looking for. Okay, okay, autonomy. When it came to that, um, he might have done something different. But once again, D'Angelo hasn't been in the spotlight uh, for for some time now, so he may have had to take a back seat and was got and and it was an idea that Jay had and was like, hey, you know, the perfect person for this part would be D'Angelo. So, you know, so as far as a ranger, Jay-Z is an awesome lyricist, but as far as an arranger and uh, as far as song composition from an R&B standpoint, uh, I know that D'Angelo would have went somewhere else with that. All right, so you were being nice. Uh, I'm just basically going to paraphrase what you just said, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but basically what Prince was saying, or I'm going to say it, is D'Angelo ain't been relevant for a long time. This song, this should have been a collaboration that was probably done about 20 years ago. This should have been on the heels of the How Does It Feel D'Angelo, the brown sugar D'Angelo. I mean, this man running around the backyard, we're playing with his grandkids now, so he's way past his prime. So, you you know, I think the song probably would have been served better if this would have been done years ago, first thing. But, 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 but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because I, I think that's a relevant conversation to have in this moment when we're talking about this record, because you mentioned, because when it comes to people being relevant, um, past a prime I mean I don't I just feel like we don't give our artists the same grace and ability that uh a Mick Jagger or you know the Rolling Stones or the Grateful Dead or 
Guns N' Roses or some of our other counterparts that are still touring and they're 70 years old. You know what I'm saying? So, well, well Pete, don't to... get mad at me. I gave him grace. I'm mad that he kept repeating the same thing over and over. It's Jay Z fault. Jay Z didn't give him grace because if Jay Z would have felt a certain kind of way, then maybe he could have got a verse on the song instead of just repeating the same line. Hey, that ain't my fault. You got to talk to Jay Z about that. So, uh, at the same time, so with that being said, because I know we we had the conversation about three stacks feeling like he ain't had nothing else to say. Um, and maybe Jay is kind of riding that sentiment. I remember when Three Stacks, when all of the, the flute album came out, Erica Badu uh, posted that we didn't deserve any boss uh, just from a current state of the culture. And, you know, it's just... It's just different. If you look at, if you look at Melly Mel and Curtis Blow, by the time we got to the nineties and Nas and Wu Tang, they probably felt the same way. It was like, yo, that's not hip hop, but it's an evolution. It's an evolution that you know we should still, and for those who still cherish Jay Z and and D'Angelo, we should still be able to get that art. And we shouldn't shovel them off. Now, when the art changes and it's not uh, what we want, then yeah, then we got a right to say, hey, man, that's not it. Um, and he has a right to say, well, this is all you're going to get. Uh, for me on this one, um, I'm going to stick. I, I, I'm going to pass on this. One. That's just like Kanye. I want the old Kanye back. I want graduation Kanye back. But we're not gonna get it. So, so here's my only issue with it. Um, I'm not actually upset that they did something different, and I'm glad again we're gonna keep kind of re referencing the Outcast song. Outcast wasn't rapping on that song. It, it started out with Sleepy Brown, but one for the for for the first part, they actually had enough respect for Sleepy Brown. They let him do a verse on that song. He just didn't keep repeating the same thing over and over. And that melody was crazy. You know the melody. Thick well, shorts, yes. Lincoln clean. But that was Maybe Curtis. That, but that was a Curtis Brown melody. Hey, wherever it I came mean, from, it still was hot though. See, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Kurt, that, not that Curtis wasn't Brown, rapping, but, but Curtis, it was still hot. Curtis Mayfield. That was hot. And let's think about when when Three Stacks and, and uh, Big Boy was doing they talking part. That wasn't rapping, but we still remember some of the stuff they were saying. You know why? Because it was funny. They made it funny. And it was engaging. Like, what do he say? Yo, uh, when you can't go down to UPS. <laughs> Got that cloudy piss. Yo, so what do he say? Uh, he yelling in the crowd, Hollywood cold. See, look, that song came out almost, what, over 20 years ago. And we still remember lines from that song. That's how crazy that is. But we just listened to this song. I can't tell you one thing Jay-Z just said. He wasn't rapping. I don't care that he was just talking a spoken word. It wasn't funny. It really wasn't anything thought provoking. Well, I was like, man, did you just hear what he said? It's just like, like, what are we doing? I mean, when you got a billion dollars, I mean, what is there to talk about? He's talking about tears in the champagne. He not talking about State Street no more. You know what I'm saying? Marcy Projects. So, I mean, you got to evolve. You know, it's 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 a different life. We we as normal people just don't um we can't fathom at this point. So so basically what I'm hearing is he need to leave it to these young boys that still trying to get to that level because they can probably more relate to the common man versus he talking to people that only what the Jeff Bezos and the Elon Musk and only that tier of people can relate to what he's talking about. Yeah, man. You know, hey, hey it's, it's a market for everything. He just found what that that was. It he may be up in the clouds of where he's feeling, but you know, and how he's um projecting what he's doing, but hey man. That's that's um 
The only thing him. this song missing was missing was Andre 3000 playing the flute in the background while the song was going off, man. But uh, <laughs> dog, this was uh, crazy. And it was 10 minutes long. So you had to, you got to suffer through 10 minutes of that. It was hard for me just to listen to the little bit that I just played. And I listened to the whole thing just so I could get enough understanding of what was going on to be able to talk about it. But I suffered through that 10 minutes. I was like, if I don't ever hear this song again, it won't hurt my feelings. Mm. I'm, ju I'm just saying, man, that was horrible. And again, I hate to keep going back to the outcast. Maybe they set the bar too high for this kind of music because they're a uh, long song that was basically just spoken word was amazing. Oh, and I don't know if you knew this, but Outkast song, they that was a live band that was playing that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've I've watched the uh the interviews where it where Big Boy talked about how that record came all together. Yeah. So so they actually and put some thought and some effort into their song. That's probably why. It's timeless, but this this thing that Jay Z just did—I don't know what this was. Maybe he was trying to create a moment, you know what I'm saying? And in that trying to create a moment, he basically um, was just saying, "Yo, I'm, this the new this the new wave," and some at certain points you just gotta. Understand that if you're not with the youth, um, like let them set the new waves and just stick to the script or what you know and what people know you for. So I That's will I cut them a little break in this. Now, I, I got to admit, I haven't watched a movie. Now, if there's a scene in the movie that kind of fits perfect, with this song and he created the song with the movie in mind, then it kind of makes sense for him. But just as a, just listening to the song, just either, you know, through some headphones in your car or in your house, this song, oh my goodness. If you wanted to torture people, like if you captured people and you wanted to torture them, this would be the way to do it. <laughs> Play it as loud as you can. Put it on repeat. I mean, it's already 10 minutes long, so oh my goodness. And just let it keep looping over and over and over again. You, The person to tell you anything that you want to know after about the second or third time that's on repeat. I mean, I, I would have to say that uh, the uh, let, me, let me put the bright spot to this, is that we still have the other art to go back to. So on, and on a day where I may not be feeling 2024, Jay-Z, I can go back and pick apart Blueprint 3 or the Black Album. I can go back to those records. Reasonable and Doubt. Reasonable Doubt, yeah, for sure. That's the classic. But, uh, you know, Jay always was able to, he's a, a a prolific songwriter when it comes to giving you a story. And he can articulate that story so vividly. And few artists are able to do that, to be able to articulate a story to where you can close your eyes and you can follow along. And what the beauty in that is that when you follow along you get to fill in the blanks of what the rest of the story is. That is, you know, prolific songwriting to me. Um, not going to say that I got that vibe from this spoken word, but I got the other art of his that I can go back and, and uh, be inspired again by. Man, I almost want to like have a moment of silence. Like this is like a sad day for me, man. I don't know if I should have a moment of silence, pour a little but then, liquor. But then you get, but then you get God did like 2022, And that's probably what makes this even worse for me to do something like that. And then to turn around and do something like this, man, he, he being funny right now. 
and, and I'm gonna say what's crazy, and I, and I can't think of the specific album right now, but he's done spoken word type stuff on some of his albums before, so he know how to do it. He's done like talking type, spoken type word on stuff before, and it actually was hot. But there's not anything that uh from from my end on spoken word, there's not uh a lyric that I remember on any of that other art that he did that stuck to me. Um I I don't remember any of it. Um but the most illest songs like man, so I almost got to give, I, I would give Jay a pass based off the art that he gave us prior. Now, someone that I cannot give a pass to, who never strayed away, but always picked the worst beats ever was Nas. And I, 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 I don't think that there's a lyricist like, but just the beat, like the the stuff with uh, Hit Boy is cool. I it, it's a resurgence, uh, but the songs just he was better. You know, I appreciate him in the yester years, uh, but Hit Boy is he a monster, and I love what they do together. Um, it just some of the songs. He wasn't the greatest at hooks. So, so basically what I'm hearing is if you could have took the old Nas and paired it with the hit boy beats, that would have been a perfect marriage. Uh no. Nah. Um what he should have done, uh some of the most he should have stayed. What I would have what would have Love to have seen or heard was on on I am got the got he should have got all the cats that was crazy at the time he should have got a he should have sought out the high tech Della uh, had Q tip he should have had Q tip executive produce I am and it wouldn't have been the same like he could have had Easy Mo B. Uh, DJ Premier, they would have fit into that large pro. Should have went back into the chamber with them. Um, he didn't get, he didn't get, he lost me on that. And it was hard to get me back. And and, and I like, uh, I like uh, One Mic. Um, I love him and that producer together. Um, but I don't think that I, I think Q Tip should have took took over and really gave and and, and created that landscape. Uh, Hit Boy then hit, coming back with Hit Boy, it would have kind of just went right in. Or also he could have got with Alchemist. Alchemist was of that era. Alchemist, High Tech, Dilla, like he could have he could have gotten them folks, man. Yeah, I'm should've surprised left. he ain't never give with Alchemist. Man, you know, he was doing the track master thing, man. When track masters got a hold of him, man, it just, it went to trash, trash. And I love Nas, man. I love Nas, but it's trash. Like, I just, he just picked the worst beats. Um, hey, man, me. you didn't like the show day. Hey, what's oh. your prize? Hey. No. <laughs> no. We we tuned out after that. Hey, I was just being funny, man. I, I know how you uh, feel I about mean, that. I'm sorry. I, I hate to bring that yeah, back up. The, yeah, I mean, how you feel about this is how I felt about that's that. Why, that's why I brought it up. I could see you gritting your teeth over there. You was like, why yeah. did you bring that song up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, just to, you know, and then just like the rest of his career, I felt like for me as a fan, and other people may take it differently, but like, I think he was playing catch up to Jay, man. Jay just embraced the new producers and, and had and was willing to listen, you know, and no ID was in tow. And, you know, so he came across Kanye 
and then came back who was Just a student of, uh, exactly you know so jay studied what it was and and was really looking for a hybrid and then he knew that kanye was going to be a star and take off but he wanted to go back to the root of who taught kanye how to do it so he got no id and then no id really showed him not, like i love blueprint three like a, a lot of people say the black album i like the black album but blueprint three no id spazzed out like that record is like goes i mean on the chamber files with me and dick and, and and jack you know we definitely gonna start talking about these records and how how we go in on them um but from a like go back to the essence you know i, I just don't think track masters was the the right pick for um you know and some people may say that about me um, you know why i don't rap over certain beats or or like i don't go back to the traditional chop masters i mean and i love what jack do and that easy flow joint he gave me i just went and murdered it just just so people will leave me alone and don't you know just because i do other stuff don't don't play with me though all right, I man. Well, I want you to push the envelope, man. So for your next joint, man, maybe we can reach out to somebody. We can get three stacks playing the flute, and then we can uh, let D'Angelo just keep singing the same one-line hook over and over again as you rap over him singing that one line. And if we really get crazy, maybe Jay will come in and give you a spoken words on the bridge part of the song or something, man. Hey, that would be crazy. I mean, it's just... It's just so prof like you got to really look at this. Like if you're going to push, if you're going to try to push the culture, you got to know what's in the culture and you got to know the, 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 the trifecta that's that are the sacred ones right now, which is going to be Kendrick Cole and Drake, you know, they the ones they, they it. And then you got to look at the younger generation whether you like them or not, you know, you got to look at the ones. Um, I wasn't mad at 21 Savage. And I know I'm. this is kind of crazy. Where Y'all going to force going, me to like that cat too. I, I see what y'all doing, man. Y'all are going to force me to like 21 Savage. You, you can't hate on the youngest. And Yachty on the recipe, I'm telling you, I, I was just like, yo, I appreciate the young man going back to the essence. Now, I don't expect him to stay in that lane, but just the fact that he proved to a lot of the old heads that, yo, don't play with me. And then for him to do the beat and then have all the old heads salivating over it, oh yeah, you you know, you you knew what you was doing. So let's you be clear get real quick before we get out of here. So it's not that I don't like when 21 actually raps, what I have a hard time wrapping my head around, and maybe y'all just gonna force me to like this, I've never been able to wrap my head around the fact that he says his name on the song like a hundred times. He says 21 in the song more than he raps most of the time, seem like. Yeah, look, let, let me first explain. I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan. It wasn't until 3 a.m. on Glenwood or Glendale, whichever. Yes, 3 a.m. on Glenwood, where I was just like, he can rap on the beat. And you know, I know some producers from VA that just, he had some back and forth with um, that just was not feeling him. But I mean, it's cool though. That's just that's just the way it is. And you gotta understand it and and grow from it or you get lost. One one. Uh, on, in 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 the past, mm -hmm. you got to embrace the future. I always, as a producer, I wasn't always embraced. You know, some cats thought that, you know, me kind of doing the jazz flavored Dilla style wasn't it. Like like they they didn't, and it, it was funny because it was like, yo, I'm I'm in the essence of this, and then they was just like, nah, man, we need we need some some something to mash out to. I was like, oh, okay. And that's just wasn't what I was doing. So, 